In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to code a web application completely with Vibe coding, even if you have zero programming knowledge. We're going to be using Next.js for web development, we're going to be using Superbase for our backend and database, and we're going to be using ShatCN for a super clean UI, and so that your AI doesn't have to build all of the components from scratch. So, who is this video ideal for? People with low or no programming knowledge, or even people with medium programming knowledge who want to start building web applications fast. So, to begin, I'm going to assume that you have a few things installed. So, we're going to assume that you have Git installed. You can follow this tutorial along without Git, but I highly recommend it. Then I'm also going to expect that you have Node installed on your computer so that you can run npm commands and install Next.js. And I'm going to assume that you already have Windsurf and Cursor set up. You have your themes, whatever, and we're just going to get straight into programming. So, the first thing we're going to have to do in the first part of this tutorial is going to be downloading my next Super Shatsy and Boilerplate. I'm going to have a link to it in the description. So you're going to copy this URL up here if you have GitHub. And if you don't have GitHub, you're just going to have to download the code as a zip here. You could just go here and do CMD and open that up. And if you're on Mac, you're going to have to go Terminal. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to navigate various directories and stuff. But for now, all you need to know is that you can open a terminal and you can type this command git clone and then put this url if you have git installed otherwise use a zip and then we should now have it locally i'll see that i have this next super base boilerplate here so the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to rename it and i'm going to rename it basic to do app so once we've renamed this to basic to do app we're going to open this up and you guys are going to see that we have a few files here now we don't want to open this up in our normal files we want to open this up with cursor so that is the first step done installing it so now that we have our base, very basic to-do app, we can just do file, open folder, and go here to our desktop and open this. And we should now have it within our code repository. Now, these are very basic things. All you need to be able to do now is basically open and download our project. If you read the readme, you'll see we have similar instructions here for how to get the project, project set up. And the second part of getting our project set up is... Once we've cloned the repository, we need to install all of our dependencies. Now, I've done this with legacy peer depth, so you need to copy this command, go to your terminal, and if you don't know how to access that, terminal, new terminal, and you need to paste this here, press enter. It may take a minute or two, depending on your connectivity speed, but once that's done, we'll have everything installed so that we can run this. And there you go. If everything is successful, you should see here. If you have any issues, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Now, once we've done this, the next step is to get our database set up. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is going over to Superbase and creating your account. Once you've created a Superbase account and you're on your dashboard, you can go over to New Project. You can do it in an organization. We could just call this project whatever we want, generate a password for it and create the project. I highly recommend that you save your password before moving on. This part may seem a bit overwhelming because we're creating a new project. And if you've never worked with a database before, it'll seem a bit weird. But at the end of the day, a database is quite simple. A database is basically a spreadsheet with references. If you go over here to table editor, you'll see we can make new tables, think of them like Excel spreadsheets, and we can set columns. We can set all the columns that we want to set. We can do created ad, we can set dog uh, name or something, or like patient name, we could set task name, whatever you want. And these are all columns. Now, this database is incredibly important and we're going to be doing a few things in Superbase, but let's go back to the instructions within the readme of this project. So the next part for setting up is to create an env.local file and add our environmental variables. And this is only going to be locally. This is why this isn't packaged with it, because we're going to have some very sensitive information in here. So make sure to not share this file with anyone. We're going to go new file dot env dot local. Next, you're going to do is you're going to go back to Superbase. You're going to go to your project settings and you're going to go to data API. And here you're going to have all of your important keys. Now we're going to have a URL, a project URL, our anon key, which is public, and our service role key, which is incredibly private. And you never want to share this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste this into our environmental file. This is within the readme.md once again, which is basically the instructions for how to set up the project. As you can see, these are key values. Next public superbase URL, next public superbase anon key, superbase service role key. Next public appended in front means that we don't care if this is shared publicly. Well, if it doesn't have that appended, it means that we do care and it should be used only on the server side. You don't really need to know what that means, but it's basically a security thing. We can first of all copy the URL by just clicking copy here, going back and just pasting it straight up like that. Then you can go to your anon key, copy your anon key, go back, paste it there. It doesn't matter if you guys see it now because I'm going to delete this project afterwards. And then this, make sure not to share it, reveal it, copy it, go back and paste it here. Once you've done that, you have your basic Superbase set up. 
However, the next thing is we're going to follow bullet point number five of my readme file, and we're going to create a public users table. Now, what is a public users table? It's basically a table that holds your user information, your user's information publicly that links to your authentication user. A bunch of gibberish, right? But all you have to do is copy this code here, which is Postgres SQL, which says create table public users, blah, 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 which is basically going to create a database table for us. We're going to go to Superbase, we're going to go to our SQL editor, and we're going to paste this here, and we're going to click run. Success, no rows return means that it should be successful. If we go over to our table editor, you should see that we now have something that says users with a little lock that says RLS disabled. In here, we can open this up. We could see that we have ID, created at, and RLS disabled. We should definitely click on RLS here and click enable RLS for our table and enable it. The next you're going to have to do may be something that you don't necessarily want to do for every single project, but I'd highly recommend it for this one. We're going to click and we're going to add an RLS policy and we're going to do create policy and this is going to be for security. We're going to click on this one. You see where it says enable delete for users based on user ID because it's basically a pre-made security concept. We're going to click on all, copy this, paste it here. So we're using a check expression. We're going to do enable all based on user ID in this field here and we're going to save our policy. What this means now is that only users who are the authenticated user have the right to access the user this way. So if we go back here, you could see that then we can generate our Superbase types. So you can actually go to this URL, which is here by control and clicking it. Go here, you'll be able to pick from, from any projects that you have. Our current project is database two, and you can click on it. And then it will take you to this page where you can click generate and download types. Now, once you click this, it will generate this thing, which is basically going to tell cursor our database structure. We're going to open up source. We're going to go over to types and you see Superbase. It says here, replace with your own types. So we're going to right click. We're going to delete this file. We're going to go here to downloads and we're going to drag this all over the types and we're going to rename this so that it doesn't say any brackets and just make it superbase.ts. Now, the first thing I'd recommend is closing cursor and reopening it so that our so that cursor can refresh and properly digest this. And then we're basically going to have a basic authentication setup. So let's check if it's working. Now, so that you don't have to keep asking cursor to run your app and use up all your credits because I've seen people do that. You could just type npm run dev and now you can open this up and you can see if you control click this we are now on this page which already looks pretty nice another important detail is that you're going to have to go over to authentication click on general user sign up and here you're going to have to click on email and you're going to have to go on and you're going to disable confirm email So now you should be able to see if we click sign up, we are now redirected to the dashboard. And that's how you set up a project for vibe coding. Now, the next thing is, how do I actually vibe code? So this is how you vibe code. So we want to make a task management app, right? So this is my little template that I'm going to use when we're vibe coding. So we're going to open up our vibe coder and we're going to, and right now it has no context because we're not on any page, but we have this dashboard. So we're going to be very specific with what we want. And I know that's generic advice, but it's true. And you're going to use this context button or your at symbol on your keyboard to start giving it context of what you want to do. The reason why we set up this project and why I try to get you to understand where everything lies in the project is because it's incredibly important to be able to give your vibe agent the context of where it needs to be. If I want to do something in the dashboard, for example, I'll type at dashboard. Put a tasks page in here, please. And that's not specific enough. We have to also think about what's going to interact with the database. If we want our tasks page to save when the user reloads it and be saved per account, we're going to have to do it more like this. And this is how you're going to get cursor to do proper queries for you using Superbase and get everything to work. I'm going to write an example prompt that's going to probably do us a task page all in one. We need to create a basic to do list page in the dashboard. If you do not already have an implementation for this in your database, your superbase.ts will reflect this because remember that reflects the current state of the database from when we exported the types. So we're going to say superbase.ts has our current database schema. You can say basically exactly this every time you make a request. I would like you to, to help me create this page and first help me set it up in the database first set it up in the database. Then we're going to say something like, once you have given me this SQL, I will create the table 
then you can query it using at client.ts. That is also a very important detail. We give it a way of having to record a lot of things querying. So I'm showing you guys basic queries and setup with vibe coding. So now if we go here, once given this SQL, I'll create a table that you can query using at client.ts. Please help. Of course, we want to set it to the agent mode or whatever the equivalent is for Windsurf. I'm not sure. So it's going to help us make a to-do list. And as you can see, remember from before within the readme that we had to do create table, it's telling us a table. If we wanted to change it, we'll just ask it to change it before we go and we apply it. But it's given us a table that says create table, public to-dos, and it adds a bunch of rollover security. And all this looks good to me, to be honest. It even gives us a trigger to handle when the thing is updated. So we're just going to copy all this. We're going to go back to our Superbase database. We're going to click once again on SQL editor. We're going to delete whatever was here. We're going to paste this and run it. If we get a success, it means no rows were returned. We could check to do's and we now have to do list inside of our database. Now, obviously this is extendable for everything, but this is when the exciting stuff happens. But just remember, every time you update something in your database, you need to go back and you need to update the types. So once again, we're going to go into our readme and we're going to go here where it says generate Superbase types. I'm going to click on it and we are going to select the project of the types we want to generate. We went through this before and we're going to download them again. This is why I recommend, this is why I don't recommend renaming them every time you download them, just dragging them in here, then renaming it here, removing the stuff at the end, well, deleting the original file, removing the stuff at the end, because you're probably going to end up repeating this again and again and again. Unfortunately, this is probably the easiest method, so that's a bit of manual work that you have to do, but you know, that's vibe coding for you. Then close and reopen cursor just to refresh the database. Obviously, that's going to stop your server. So we're going to go back and we're going to rerun our server with npm run dev. But now cursor or windsurf will have context of our new tasks to create the new tasks page. So if you do at superbase now contains the tasks. And if you want to verify this, you can go to your types, superbase and scroll down until you see to do's. There we go. We now have our to do list, the to do's. Please make be able to check them off and create new ones within a page in the at dashboard. So once we've sent this, this should be a good enough prompt to the point where it understands how to kind of do it and how to make a dashboard. So that's the very basic of getting something to update in your database, which is very, very important for web apps because yes, Cursor can do a great job of doing this on the front end, but it doesn't really tend to achieve these on the back end. Let's go to our server and let's refresh the page to see the updates. And let's see if it successfully did it. Now, this is an issue that you may fee face. As you can see, everything is white, even though everything else is black, because we do have dark mode and light mode, and the add button doesn't work. But don't fear, that's vibe coding for you. Everything will be buggy. Another piece of advice now is tell it how to use the styles. Within globals.css, we have a lot of variables. And what these variables are, are, there, are is they are colors that will be consistent across our application. So if we do, the colors are off please use at globals.css and that is the power of the at use our color variables within and then you'll see that it created this to-do list so we're going to do at to-do list so that it is on theme and then what it should do is it should go and it should fix all of our colors to be using our consistent colors and that's part of my boilerplate that i provide for you guys so you don't even have to worry about setting up your colors setting up your project as you can see it kind of did it it fixed this, but it didn't fix the thing in the background. And you'll see that is an issue. So sometimes we have to go and do it manually, but we can just tell it the background of the whole page is not working. It is white, even when we are in dark mode. Please fix this with, once again, at globals.css. And another thing we're going to do soon is we're going to check if it's using our components. We're going to click accept all and it should now have fixed it. So if I type, if I type page and I add it, we will see that we get an issue, error creating to do. If you're getting errors creating things, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go here or in whatever browser you're using, if you're using a Chrome browser, and we're gonna go to more tools and we're gonna go to developer tools and we're gonna see what the issue is. So as you can see, we get a rollover security policy. Now, the next thing I recommend diagnosing is by removing rollover security. See if you still get an issue. Let's click add and we still get an issue. Failing row contains blah, 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 blah null value and column user id so obviously this is going to be a bit confusing but you could just give this here and give it to here and say we should be providing the user id please provide it and then i'd recommend going back and re-enabling your row level security for that row 
Now this is where it starts to get a bit confusing because we're dealing with security issues, we're dealing with database issues, and that's where I recommend just building this out but not publishing immediately until you've learned a little bit more about security. Let's see if it gets this done and updates it. And let's see now if we can add our to-do and we can now add it, we can check it, we can check it off, we can do, hey there, this, this is a to-do. And we can now add it. And as you see, we get no errors. And if we go over to our database and we go to our tables, we go to to-dos, you can see that we've now created these to-dos and we can even edit them just like you would with a spreadsheet. And if I refresh this page, they get fetched again. That is very, very, very basic setup, but that is essentially how you get set up with Vibe coding very quickly. Now, the last thing I would recommend doing is if it is not using components that are predefined, ask it to. So if you do not see here anything that is like import button from components UI button as it has gone and auto completed, that means it is not using our components and that is a waste of code. So you will give it this page or this thing. So you will do add to-do list and you will say, please use the at components if you are not already for some UI elements. Now, if cursor is smart enough, it should go through, check which components exist in components. And it says this, I'll check what UI components we have available and it will begin to update them. And as you can see, it's now gonna use our components, which should make it look even a tiny bit more clean and consistent throughout our application. And so cursor doesn't have to take the burden of building them. As you could see, it made them a bit bigger. It made the, this a bit narrow. It made the button more consistent. You may not like the look of this, but obviously you can style these components. You can ask cursor, make this thinner, make this larger. But yeah, as you could see, that is a basic little view of how you can make an app or, you know, a web app because we have this dashboard now and the dashboard only works for users that are authenticated. Obviously, I'm going to be making a bit of a series where I go over, you know, how to vibe code this, how to vibe code that. So please leave your recommendations down below in the comments because I'm going to have a whole playlist for vibe coding on this channel soon. But yeah, that was the basic setup and how to start within an hour and how to begin vibe coding within like 15 minutes. So yeah, let me know if you guys want anything else in the next video. Peace.